Meet Mark Dwight. He was one of Hollywood's most sought after personal trainers and once a world class mountaineer. He forever changed the landscape of functional fitness by using it to transform the physiques of a handful of movie stars to become superheroes. In 2007, I was a nerdy 138-pound student of cinema with intentions of finishing film school and going on to direct big-budget movies. Then, the movie 300 came out and changed my future forever. I geeked out on the filmmaking and found a clip about how the actors trained to become Spartans. I had never seen anything like it and was extremely intrigued with this style of training, which led to me walking into a local CrossFit gym and then eventually working for CrossFit HQ. This is where Heber and I met and worked closely together for almost a decade. Eventually, this led to us starting the Buttery Bros and created the coolest job ever. We followed Mark's career over the years and have a ton of questions. What is Amber Heard really like? And what is the difference between someone training for a movie role versus training the average person for life? All right, now we're here in downtown Salt Lake City at an unmarked gym, catching up with the legend that inspired us and so many other people, Mark Twight. Roll the footer. What's um, FYF stand for for the people at home? It originally stood for Fuck You Friday. It'll read easier than it is. Oh yeah, I'm, <laughs> that, that's I'm familiar, <laughs> familiar with those types. That, that, you guys all look like a bunch of emo kids about to work out. <laughs> <laughs> Aaron was like, how do you want to prepare for the uh, Buttery Bros video? And I was like, let's go beat Buttery Hose. Just line the fuse. So last time I did this workout, this happened. Seriously? No. <laughs> <laughs> this is an either or, death by. Choose either a death by 20 meter ski erg, basically on the minute you're gonna ski 20 meters, add 20 meters every minute until you can no longer. Or death by 15 meter farmer carry. So once across the gym. Marsden is gonna do what? I'm gonna do death by ski erg. I am gonna do the farmer carry one. So I'm gonna carry 53 pound kettlebells 15 meters and then I'm gonna add 15 meters every minute until I can't make it. Good luck. Good luck. See you on the other side. Uh, peace be with you. If you're gonna pace anything on the death by, you should have the same pace the entire time. I spent 20 years, basically from 1980 to 2000, climbing mountains as my profession. Feel good about it, feel good about it. Slow it down. Some things that I did, speed record that set on a 3,000 foot high frozen waterfall in the Canadian Rockies. And the reality bath was a 600 meter waterfall. We did the first ascent of up there that has not been repeated yet. Sort of encapsulate my climbing career in one statement. It'd just be that we were trying to answer the question, how light is too light? How are you holding? Bad. Nice. It's not fun today. My first trip out to Santa Cruz, my first exposure to CrossFit, and got my fucking ass kicked. So that was November uh, 2003. I came back here, started my own space, Jim Jones. I probably put Castro through his first CrossFit workout. And we hired a well-known climber named Mark Twight. He was one of the best climbers in the world at the time. He goes, I do something called CrossFit. And I go, well, what's CrossFit? And he goes, it's all this short, really high intensity workouts. After I got my chin just chewed up during Fight Gone Bad, I was like, we should have like a competition that has like soloing on loose rock or something. Like that would be cool. <laughs> Are you out? Are you done? I think so. We either made it or I missed it by a lot. 14th round, we got up to 280 meters. I'm warm, feeling fresh, feeling froggy. Hey, how about you? Ooh. Uh, I can't remember the time. I think I made it to round 10. If we, if we bust out a greased watermelon, I'm gonna be ready. Yeah? Yeah. I don't understand the reference, <laughs> but yes. Yeah. The actual workout is 11 uh, ball over shoulder, you know, two or over shoulder, and then get on an assault bike and hit over a thousand watts. As soon as you see that number over a thousand, you're, you're done. And you move right back, in, right onto the next thing, which would be a heavy dumbbell push press, come back, D-ball squat, and then back on the bike then 11 floor or bench press, and it'll go through all that four times. 
So I first worked with Zack Snyder in 1995. Said, hey, we want to do an ice climbing thing with you for a Budweiser spot for the upcoming Winter Olympics. Sometime in early 2005, we put up the Jim Jones website. He went to the studio and said, check this shit out that these guys are doing. I wanna hire this guy to make all of the Spartans look a certain way. One guy at the studio was convinced that Zach had actually made that website basically in order to sell them on the training budget. Cause this guy was like, there's no way people are doing this stuff in the real world. There is absolutely no way, look at this. Part of the premise for 300 was put them through this crucible so that they had muscle for smashing, not for fashion, if you will. And that they actually started to believe in their own capability because that shows through. It would appear that training for an aesthetic appearance for a movie role versus training someone to climb a mountain or get in a cage to fight somebody else, it would appear that there'd be a lot of difference. And the only actual difference doesn't happen in the gym. The differences happen in the sport specific aspect of it. Anything that happens in the gym, it's the same because it's a human body. call ourselves exercise psychologists because you got to get into people's heads to understand what language will work for them. I'll just use a more recent example since, you know, like work with Jason Momoa for three hours in the morning, get like a 15 minute break, and then one of the actresses, maybe Amber Heard comes in and you switch gears right away. You have to be a different person to bro down with certain actors or even actresses because some girls might speak a more aggressive language and some might need a two hour hug. So where was Amber? She's awesome. It was like mid 2016. It was the middle of the divorce. She was getting dragged through the most heinous shit in the media. The gym time was a place that was safe for her. She came in and worked really hard. It was really amazing. At the end of it, she's just like, thank you. I think you probably saved my life. Those three months were a wonderful experience. Getting people to work hard and getting people to understand what hard work actually was. You know, people in here today where there was a moment when all the oxygen had apparently left this general area downtown. I was like, this is like the old days when people were like, oh. Taking people on these journeys through things that they didn't believe they could do. Because you put a person through a workout like that today, for about a 20 or 30 minute window afterwards, you have a direct pipeline into the brain. And you can teach them whatever the fuck you want and it will stick at that point. Are you done? Yeah. What was the time? 20 minutes. Yeah. That was rough. It's hard to like do a max effort on a bike every time. It's so hard. That bike, that bike took my soul. It's fun to push yourself to where this is the only meaningful place you can get to. This endorphin rushes. That's a real thing. It's got the time to beat, huh? Today. Yeah. Sometimes I redline and fall apart. Yeah. So. I mean, those, <laughs> that, was just about I mean the, that uh, Postmates farmer's carry, you did pretty good there too, you know? Yeah, I worked for Uber Eats. Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> Tell them. Shout out to the Buddha Gang. We're going to go over this workout that we just did. It was the uh, FU Friday. FYF, yeah. Uh, I was an 8.6 strain running on real low sleep right now and a 164 max heart rate. My max heart rate was 167. My average heart rate was 130. It was a solid good time. I really like that like push on the bike. But shout out to the Butter Gang. Shout out, tell me who. I just scrolled down and I found like the 200th most slept person today. It's Kelly Rice. Kelly Rice. Let me tell you about her. What about? She's 35 out of the United States. No she's way. She's on a 315 days be. data streak. Oh. That means that she's almost at a year and she's almost been a member for a year as well. Get that final through 50 days or something, Kelly. All right. What are you gonna send her? We're gonna send her a new band. Yeah, of course. You're gonna get banned if you get Kelly Rice. That concludes the Whoop and the Butter Gang. We out. Man, it was really cool to catch up with Mark Twite after all these years, after the impact that he's had on my life. That was a lot of fun. That was a big surprise to me. Just a positive note on Little Amber Heard. Yeah, not what I expected. No, not guy, at all. Or anyone right these days. So if you guys want to check out the nonprofit and their book and Mark and everything like that, we'll put the link in the description so you can go check that out. They also have this new program called the Space Station where they put up workouts that are supposed to be like pushing the envelope of what's physically possible. Sounds kind of fun and they are pretty cool. But man, this is so hot. There's only one solution. 
for this prescription. And you know what I'm thinking? Yeah, yeah, you pick it up on thing with loop loop. Let's go. go. Tell me why just said. Oh, 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 I think I know why they have a weight limit on us. Yes, completely banged my head. I was like, this is not on the ride supposed to go. I'm concussed. I'm concussed. I could not. CTE has entered oh the chat. Oh my god. Oh my god. All right. It's time to beam dream. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers, cheers, cheers fellas. Cheers. 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 Yeah. Good work today. We're going to pick a comment. Last week we told you you get this new shirt. I don't even know if it's going to be available anymore, so you should buy it right now if it is. Oh. Um, you guys tell me when. Not yet. No way. Whoa, whoa. Let him scroll. Okay. Yeah. All right. I'm going to go like this. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. That's this is a good a one. Paragraph. Tin Skipper. I just had a dream two days ago about me and the Buttery Bros swimming in the pool, racing each other. <laughs> two days ago, and we'll look at what we got here in the swimming video. I just love it, keep it up with you guys, because this is the swimming video where we saw Drew. You're dreaming of us swimming yeah. together. I yeah. hope it went a lot Kids better. Yeah. yeah, this yeah. guy's a great swimmer. Yeah. He looks like Go a, watch last week's video. Julian is aquatic in nature. Yeah. yeah. This is actually real life. This is a beam dream. This is a beam dream? Yeah. We were traveling through Europe, but somehow we got through Greenland, and we you convinced me that we have to go by train to make this shoot, as usual, because you're a travel agent. We're on a train in Greenland to get exactly. to Exactly, does okay. it make sense? It's yep. a dream. Yeah, yep. So we're going somewhere else, and I give them my bags, but they didn't tag it, and then I, we never got them back. This doesn't even sound like a dream. This sounds like something that would happen. Like, yeah, yeah that's what kind of hit me, it kind of hit me home. Kind of know? sounds yeah. like Spain. Yeah, it sounds like Spain, yeah, it does. That sucked. All right. All right. That's the end of the show. Thanks yeah. for watching. Like right. and subscribe. He is the best. Mm -hmm.